and welcome back. Here we are again. I'm picking up the ball where we left off last time. My name is Steve. I'm Ian, and we're still in the basement. And if you're just joining us, we are doing a ongoing series on an RPG called Down Below, which you may or may not have heard of. If you've heard of it, congratulations. You've probably talked to one of us or stumbled across our videos elsewhere. If you haven't heard of it, don't worry. That's because we're making it up as we go along. Well, not really, but close enough. Uh, if you'd like to know more, I'm actually going to direct you to go back to previous videos because to recap where we've been so far is going to take more than about the 30 seconds I have for introdu introduction. So we're going to dive straight on into the today's topic. Uh, today's chosen topic is character evolution and justifying it in the story. Alright, so we touched on this pretty quickly last time, and the idea is, uh, stop me if I'm wrong here, the idea is that it is not only natural but important for a character to evolve over time. Mm -hmm. Evolution over time can take a lot of different forms. The most important part is that uh, a character that evolves is always recognizable as the same character. The audience of a movie or a book will forgive any number of time skips as long as the characters remain recognizable to them, as long as any changes wrought on the off-screen are still perceived as true to the character. Um, most complaints do not come from someone saying, well, they changed the character off screen, but it's still true to the character. I really would have liked to see that. They come from, they changed the character, and it now reads like a totally different character, and they never explained that. Uh, well, tough. Unfortunately, sometimes that happens. We'd like to avoid that whenever possible. So, the main thing for character evolution is that evolution, whatever form it takes, remains true to the character, and Ian touched a little bit on that last time with the idea of retiring old traits in favor of new traits. I'm going to talk a little more about that storyline-wise. Have I missed anything? Basically, the idea is that you should be doing it step by step, mm -hmm. and it should seem like a natural process of change over time, because everybody changes over time, rather than a wholesale ripping out a piece and chucking in a new piece. So, really quick, I'm actually going to talk about four different possibilities for change and the requirements thereof before we're done today. I've been going for about two and a half minutes, so we're going to make this fast. The first possibility is actually the possibility that character evolution does not revolve around mechanical change at all. In a lot of games, this is true, and this is just fine. Uh, in fact, in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of movies, this is very true. Um, the character of Severus Snape in the Harry Potter movies, or in the Harry Potter books, honestly, does not mechanically change very much. You learn an awful lot more about his past and his relationship, but we get to see Severus Snape at his height as a magician throughout the entire series. He does not grow as a magician, uh, even though he grows as a character. His motives change, but his methods do not. His capabilities and skills are exactly the same at the end of his part in the story as at the beginning. So I wanted to start off by acknowledging that never are you required to change in order to grow as a character. But even then, every revelation about Severus Snape fit the greater tapestry of the whole character. Second thing I'm going to mention is the change from within. Uh, from many perspectives, this is the platonic ideal of character growth. Each and every change to the character sheet is prompted by something that happened in-game. This can be positive or negative. I'm actually lumping them both together. Uh, a character who develops skill in lockpicking because he has had to pick locks is perfectly acceptable. This is change from within. This is guided by, we keep running into locked doors. Someone had better learn to pick locks. I will learn to pick locks. And in a because of the way we're abstracting it in a Pokemon-like sense, oh, I forgot how to uh, cook a good Eggs Benedict in order to pick locks. I still remember that information, I just haven't really had the opportunity to cook a good Eggs Benedict, so I'm going to put the active part of my character into picking locks and leave the chef as a background. Also, however, this can come from absences. A character who lost her left arm in an underground uh, street fight against Yakuza thugs will be picking up a trait to replace that, not necessarily directly related to the fact that the arm is missing, but related to the fact that the character is driven in some way to f redefine what's important about themselves based on what happens to her on screen. So that was type 2, the story organically forcing it to happen. Okay, carrying on, type 3. 
I'm off camera here with my left arm. I should fix that at some point. Uh, type 3 is backwards from type 2. Uh, type 3 is the stuff that does not happen on camera but still happens in character. Uh, this is usually negotiated between the GM and the player uh, off screen. No amount of actual off screen talking things up is a substitute for what happens on screen in terms of character. But it's entirely plausible that a character, a player who has been uh, feeling that their story is being neglected in the course of talking with the GM could reassign some points to help their character grow better to fit the story that's currently happening. Uh, I'm using these terms very specifically. I'd actually like to talk about that again at a later date, perhaps in the next video, perhaps in a couple after that. But it's very important to note that there are several important stories at work. There's the story of what the GM wants to happen. There's the story of what the players want for their characters. And then the most important story is neither of those. The most important story is the story that happens around the gaming table or in the gaming space, whether physical or virtual, that shared social space where the game happens. Uh, I'd like to talk about that in a bit, but for now, the important thing is that uh, the third type of change is similar to the second, but it's driven by things that happen outside that shared gaming space. Finally, the fourth and final type of change that I'd like to talk about today is the guided change, where the player has identified something they would like to work towards. They have identified a trait they'd like to change out, not related to what's been happening in the story. Um, for instance... Uh, this would be the type of situation where a player has changed in their desires and unrelated to what's going on in the game, now they want to play a martial artist, mm -hmm. but they still enjoy playing this character and this character's relationships, so they want this character to change towards this new thing that they like. Then the way to do that is, that once is. it's been decided and agreed upon, uh, rather than simply having it happen out of the blue, once it's been decided that you want to change the character that way, guide it into that shared story space and have events, basically retro-causally, arrange events to push the character towards that change. So, speaking of pushing towards change, we're about to change from on the air to off the air because we have gone a little bit past our scheduled shooting time for today. I will see you next time. Thank you for following through the cracks with us today.